Please rise and body your spirit for the reading of the gospel. <laughs> Gospel according to John. Now, a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. And then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and you're going to go there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he'll be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to the fellow disciples, let us go also so that we might die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about her brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who believes and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. Well, when she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up and quickly went to him. Now, Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. And they followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone lying against it. And Jesus said, 
take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, in it, there, there already there is a stench because he's been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Over the years, Reader's Digest has printed many quirky items from the daily lives of ordinary people. And what, some of these are really pretty funny. For example, for example, a woman by the name of Jennifer Pace wrote in a few years ago to tell about a billboard she passed while driving through Texas. The billboard read, Stand up and be counted for the census, for the 2000 census. The sign was, uh, the, it was sponsored by the Rosewood Cemetery. Another woman wrote in with a funny excuse from a co-worker. The man explained his absence from work by saying, I can't come in today, I'm having an autopsy. But with any luck, I'll be in tomorrow. Now, I'm sure a lot of us are dedicated to our work, but I think few of us will be able to return to work after our autopsies. Now, you and I, we all well know the story of Lazarus and his sisters. You know, Lazarus, Mary, and Martha were among Jesus' closest friends. Jesus stayed in their home, ate meals with them. So when it was obvious that Lazarus was seriously ill and showed no signs of getting better, the sister sent word to Jesus saying, Lord, the one you love is sick. And Jesus said, well, this sickness will not end in death. No, it's for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified in it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and Mary and Lazarus, but did you notice that when Jesus heard that Lazarus was sick, what did he do? Did he rush off? No, he stayed where he was for two more days. I mean, how many times have you prayed that Jesus would come and heal a loved one or heal yourselves, and Jesus kind of lingers, you know, seemingly somewhere far, far off, and all you're left with was some kind of silence? You know, that's what faith is all about, right? Believing in God and God's protective care during those times when God seems to be kind of high up and far away. I mean, if we knew that God would heed our every wish, well, that wouldn't be faith, would it? That'd be something else. But in today's gospel, we see that God's timetable is not our timetable. So Jesus kind of lingered where he was. And then, eventually, he said to his disciples, okay, let's go back to Judea. Now, the disciples were opposed to that idea because it was already becoming pretty dangerous for Jesus in Judea. But Jesus wouldn't be deterred. Jesus said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. You know, of course, the disciples were very confused, thinking he sleep meant to sleep, but it really meant Lazarus had died. So upon his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. And the fact that Lazarus was in the tomb for four days is significant because there were some Jews who believed that you should return the grave for the purposes of mourning for three days after your loved one's death. Because, well, the soul of the person, apparently, was thought to stick around the body for three days. But then, after three days, according to tradition, the soul of the dead person would depart. Four days 
may have very well been a statement by Jesus that Lazarus really, truly was 100% dead, that there was no life left in him at all. I mean, it's one thing for people to revive through CPR or other forms of resuscitation. It happens all the time. But it's quite another thing for a person to be decomposing in the grave for four days and then be brought back to life like Lazarus was by the divine command of Jesus. Anyway, when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary stayed at home. And, And Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. And, and then she sat, added this little addendum. She said, but I know even now that God will give you whatever you ask. Now, remember the story of Mary and Martha as told in Luke 10? Remember that it was Mary who sat at the feet of Jesus while Martha kind of scurried around the house doing household chores? And do you remember that Jesus kind of chided Martha and praised Mary? And yet in this story of raising of their brother Lazarus seems to tell us that, well, maybe it was Martha that had the more more mature faith. So Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said, well, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, Martha said. I believe that you are the Christ, that you are the Son of God who has come into the world. Then after this little conversation, Martha went and went to her sister Mary and kind of privately said, "Uh, Mary, the, the teacher is here. And he's asking for you. And when Mary heard this, she got up quickly and then she went off to see him. Now, those who have been with Mary in the house and comforting her, notice how quickly she got up and went out. And they followed her because she thought she was going to the tomb to mourn there. And when Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said the same thing that Martha said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And when Jesus saw her weeping, and those among her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. And come and see, Lord, just what they said. And Jesus wept. (laughs) We love that verse, don't we? Jesus wept. It survived many of us when we were asked to, we were young, we were asked to recite a Bible verse. So we went with Jesus wept, you know, the shortest verse in the Bible. It's the shortest verse, but it's also also one of the most powerful. Because Jesus wept. Jesus wept real tears. Just like we cry real tears when we are hurting. And the friends standing around and they said, don't see how he loved him? But of course, there are always those that say, yeah, 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 yeah. Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Well, Jesus, once more deeply moved, went to the tomb. And it was a cave with a stone lying across the entrance. And he said, you know, take away the stone. But Lord, said Martha, by this time, there's a stink. He's been there for four days. And Jesus said, did I tell you, if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And then Jesus looked up and he said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that that they may believe that you sent me. And then when he had said this, Jesus called out with a loud voice and said, Lazarus, come out. I love the old country pastor's comment about this passage. This old country pastor said, if Jesus had limited the command to Lazarus, every corpse in the graveyard would have come forth. 
So Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and his feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. And then Jesus said to them, take off those grave clothes and let him go. This is an amazing story. After four days in the tomb, Jesus raised a dead man from the grave. And there's one thing I really need you to understand today. And that is this. Do you understand that the story about Lazarus is our story also? We're not one of the bystanders. We're not Mary and Martha. We are all Lazarus as well. We are all called to new life. Lazarus, come out. We need to remember that, always remember that we will live beyond the grave with Christ and all those we have loved. You know, there was once a man who was dead on arrival in, emergency, in the emergency room, and it was the ER's policy to attempt resuscitation anyway. And after 15 minutes of CPR, the previously dead man began to show signs of life. The man stood up, or sat up, I should say, and looked around him, and he said to the ER doc, he said, Oh, I wish I was still there. It was so beautiful. The man could never explain what he meant, but he can only repeat the place that he had been was so beautiful. So beautiful. The story of Lazarus can be, and is, our story. We, too, can be turned loose. We, too, can be untied to the person who is addicted, whether with a chemical substance or something else. We hear Lazarus come out. To the person who has lived an empty, meaningless life, we hear Lazarus come out. To the tired, to the hurting, to the person at their wit's end, Lazarus come out. To all of us, Lazarus, come out. This can be the beginning of a new life. Some of you have heard the stories of nurses who, before listening to the heartbeats of children, would plug the stethoscope into their ears and let them listen to their own hearts. There's one nurse one day who tucked the the stethoscope into the ears of a four-year-old, and then she placed that disc over his heart. And she said, listen. What do you think that is? You know, that thump, 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 thump. He drew his eyebrows together in kind of a puzzled line and looked up as if lost in the mystery of the strange tap, tap, tapping deep in his chest. And then his face broke out into a grin and he said, Is that Jesus knocking? Well, maybe. And maybe Jesus is now knocking at the door of your heart today. Maybe Jesus is ordering the door rolled away from your tomb. Lazarus, come out. Now the story of Lazarus, the raising of Lazarus ends with, quote, Therefore, many of the Jews who had come with to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, Put their faith in him. So how about y'all? Have you really put your faith in him? Do you really trust him? Are you willing to turn your lives over to him? Yes, Lazarus, come out. Amen. Amen.